Hello! Today is finally the day that I make a brine shrimp ecosphere. I have seen many people fail, so I want to do it right. Instead of messing about with salts trying to recreate salt water, I went to my aquarium shop and asked if I could get some salt water from one of their tanks. And I could. They are experts, so I trust this to be alright. I left the water overnight for algae to start growing. I'm also adding these sticks for carbon and other goodies. I pre-soaked them, but they were still too buoyant. So I'll cover them with a rock, that'll look nice too. Surprisingly enough, I managed to do it on the first try. A lot of people seem to have trouble turning their brine shrimp eggs into fertile adults. I decided to skip that struggle altogether and start out with live fish food. Those are adult brine shrimp. Maybe you've noticed that they are enriched brine shrimp. That won't matter at all. Some of these are already carrying eggs and some of them are already dead. That's not necessarily a bad thing and I'll explain why later. It turns out my camera magically deleted the footage of me pouring in the prime shrimp. So just imagine the jar is still empty. Okay, so now I am putting in the brine shrimp in the jar. And now, act surprised. To feed the brine shrimp, I made a mixture of very finely ground yeast and flour. And I'm putting in just a tiny little amount. You might be wondering why I am feeding them. Because after all, this will become a closed ecosystem. Well, here's why. The brine shrimp will have to rely on algae as their primary food source in the closed ecosystem. While algae spores are definitely present in the water, there isn't much algae growing yet. So until then, the brine shrimp will eat this. This also allows for more algae to grow. Just to be sure, I will also add some brine shrimp eggs. Those are really tiny, so you have to be very careful to not put too many in there. I am only adding this amount. Okay, so the camera didn't focus, but the point is, it's not a lot. This is sort of a backup, in case the adults aren't able to breed fast enough. This will add some young blood in the mixture. Ever wondered what brine shrimp eggs look like through a macro lens? Probably not, but here it is. Now that that's done, the ecosphere is pretty much complete for now. I hear you asking, how are our little dead friends down here going to help our little living friends up there? Well, let me tell you. Brine shrimp need a whole bunch of stuff in order to survive, like carbon, calcium and a lot of other brine shrimp stuff. The dead shrimp contain all this stuff, but they are not using it, because they are in fact dead. So now this stuff can be used by the living shrimp and by next generations. I hope that made sense. Because like all crustaceans, brine shrimp will eat each other. These dead shrimp are also a great source of nutrition for the algae that will start to grow. Those algae will feed the living brine shrimp. Let's try to get some close-up footage. And I lost it. This is a much better shot. Looks nice. Let's try some slow-mo to see what's going on. So imagine you are a human, uh, I mean imagine you are a brine shrimp, but like a human. If you do jumping jacks, well that's how brine shrimp swim. 
unlike triops, who swim with their legs in front of them and not to the side. Brine shrimp are actually more closely related to triops than to regular shrimp. Their scientific name is Artemia salina, but many people also know them as sea monkeys. Something you can see really nicely here is that Artemia have three eyes. The small black dot you see in the middle of their head is one of those eyes. A brine shrimp nucleus, that's a brine shrimp in sort of a larvae state, has only one eye. A simple eye that senses the presence and direction of light. That's the little eye in the middle, because adults keep that eye. The two big eyes on the sides of their head are compound eyes, the same as insects have. That's how they have three eyes. The reason brine shrimp could work in an ecosphere, unlike triops, is because they lay two types of eggs. Triops only lay cysts. Those are eggs with a hard shell that need to be dried and then be in contact with water for at least a day before they can hatch. Not ideal in a closed ecosystem. Artemia normally lay eggs with a thin shell that hatch right away, if conditions are right, meaning not too much salt and about room temperature. When the conditions aren't right, especially if less water is becoming available, the eggs are deposited as cysts with a thick shell, which can lay dormant and dry for up to 50 years. When they come into contact with salt water for long enough, they will hatch. The fact that they lay two types of eggs isn't the only special thing about Artemia reproduction. Brine shrimp can reproduce sexually and asexually. When males are present, they can fertilize the female's eggs. This always results in diploid zygotes. Diploid means that there are two of each chromosome in every cell. Brine shrimp are also able to reproduce through parthenogenesis, meaning reproduction without fertilization, which is quite common when males aren't present. These unfertilized eggs will always result in female offspring. Interestingly enough, those eggs can be either diploid, tetraploid or even octoploid. And I'm not quite sure what could be the benefit of that. Brine shrimp do in fact grow to be quite a few months old. And given that a brine shrimp can reproduce up to 300 new nuclei every 4 days, I hope that they will be able to sustain a healthy population. They seem to really like to play underneath and around the rock. And I think it's this playful appearance that led to them being called sea monkeys and being sold commercially. I must admit that I have spent a lot of time watching them, because they really are a lot of fun to look at. This is how I imagine what it would look like to look up in the sky on a nice day on a different planet and seeing alien space monkeys flying around in the sky.
Here you can see a femur with X. And I lost it. Let's see if they are attracted to light. Sure seems like it. I think that that may have a lot to do with that simple eye I talked about before. A few days later, it looks like a lot of the brown shrimp I thought were dead seem to be alive again. Those were probably Artemia that weren't really happy in their bag, but are happy with the conditions in this jar. That's a good sign. The next few days I have been feeding the brine shrimp and they're looking really great. So I think that for now the ecosphere will be closed. The only thing we can do now is wait and see what happens. Of course I will make sure to update you. So if you don't want to miss any future updates and other projects, well, you're going to have to subscribe. Thanks for watching.